In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to derive the definite integral from Riemann subs. Now you'll note, remember in the previous lecture that we took a curve and we fitted a bunch of rectangles to it and we summed all the rectangles to get an estimate of the area of the curve. In that we did a uh, regular size rectangles, every single one was the same delta x. But now uh, there's no need for uh, the rectangles to actually be regular sized. As you can see here I fit the area of the curve pretty well using irregular sized um, intervals. So we're going to come up with a little bit different notation. We're going to call this x of k. Just uh, to be uh, consistent with uh, you know, previous works. And our formula is now going to change. Instead of going to have the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x star k delta x, and the x star uh, denotes whether you do a left, right, or a center. This is going to become the sum. I should change the equal sign. This becomes the summation from k equals 1 to n of our f x star k delta x k. probably wondering at this point, what does my delta xk exactly mean? Delta xk is actually going to be the measurement of our widest interval, whatever our widest inner is. So you could also write this delta x max. But, uh, and actually I'm going to do that just to uh, make things stand out a little bit. Now, as also we covered in the previous lecture, uh, the number of your uh, rectangles, as you get infinitely many of them, it becomes way more accurate. The more rectangles you have, the more accurate it gets. And we're actually going to apply the limits to our uh, summation to uh, come up with a formula that gives us the exact area underneath the curve. So uh, using our uh, new expression here, f of xk star delta xk and we're actually going to take the limit as delta x max goes to zero. So as our widest interval goes to infinitely small. That is going to be our formula for the exact area underneath the curve. Now you might be wondering, how can we just then stick with the original formula and then do the expression as n goes to the infinity? And the truth of the matter is, is I honestly don't know why this derivation is this way. But this is what it is. Now you take this limit. This is going to equal our integral from a to b of f of x dx. That's how we would write it. knew that there had to be a good reason for the integrals, right? I'm going to bring up a new note here and rewrite some things. Our integral of f of x dx from a to b is going to be the area underneath the curve from A to B. Now remember from uh, your derivative lecture that dx actually stands for an infinite, infinitesimally small x, or an infinitely small x. This basically has no width. So what you're doing is you're taking, uh, grab a new color here, you're taking the white height of each function, f of x, and you're multiplying it by an infinitely small width. And the a to b means that you're going to do this 
at every single point of f of x along the integral interval from a to b. So that is your definite integral. And just to write everything out, that is the area under the curve from A to B. I'm going to bring up one new note and one more page here, and I'm going to make a little disclaimer. Now when you evaluate your integral from say 0 to 2 of x squared dx, that's going to give you 1 third x to the third, 0, 2, and I'm going to explain this notation out a little bit later, and that's going to equal, uh, what that stands for is uh, evaluating your bounds, 1 third minus 1 third 0 to the third, and this is all going to equal 8 thirds as your area. Notice what I did, did there is there is no plus c. When you evaluate a definite integral, you're going to um, do it as a regular interval integral, but you're going to leave out the plus c, and then you're going to subtract your two different values. And uh, the reason for that is is because your c is just a completely arbitrary integration constant. If uh, actually, let's do a. If that's your parabola there. If you added the plus c, all you did is you added a box underneath it. We don't need to know what that area is. We're concerned what the area is under the curve. You can add as much of a rectangle underneath as you like, but it just doesn't really give us any new or useful information. So that is your basic introduction, your basic derivation to the indefinite integral. In the next lecture, I'm going to cover what I did in uh, this step here quite a bit more thoroughly. I'm going to introduce some uh, rules to evaluating indefinite integrals, and we're just going to take our knowledge sets of this much, much further. See you then.